Hey guys, this is the Q&A portion for my blog post that is all about everything I know to be true about getting $5,000 website clients and what exactly goes into that. I know a lot of people are really trying to hit that $5,000 mark for their website projects and unfortunately, I know it seems further away um, than it should, honestly. So I wanted to do a little Q&A and hopefully demystify it a little bit and help you see that you're actually probably really, really close to being able to do this. Now, before we begin, I want you to understand my approach to business because if you don't relate to this at all, then you're not going to care about my answers. Now, I am a self-taught designer. I had no business experience before starting my business. I am a college dropout. I started about as low on the totem pole as you could get and figured out things by myself pretty much along the way. To do that, I had to keep them really, really simple. Uh, I get overwhelmed easily. I complicate things myself all the time. So I had to focus on really, really simple strategies that felt good for me. So my business is very human centered. Everything I do is about being a human and letting other people be human. So that means there's room for mistakes. There's room to be weird. There's room to talk about tensions that might come up and they have happened before. And I'm going to be telling you a little bit of information and insight into how I deal with things and how I use this human approach in my business to actually have successful projects and happy clients. More than anything, I want this video to be permission for you to actually do less in your business and to simplify. Okay, so there are 13 questions I believe. I'm going to try to go through them as quickly but thoroughly as possible because I hate vague answers and I really like to provide actionable and insightful things that people can chew on and actually use. The first question is, what do the $5,000 clients want from us? I know they want value, but something more specific and not too vague would be helpful. <laughs> okay, so I love this question <laughs> and I love that this person was like, please don't be vague. So your clients, they want value, of course, but more than anything else, they want solutions. There is a reason why your client wants a website. And the thing about Getting high-end clients is that you need to be working with people who want solutions. You don't need to be working with people who just want a website because that's what other business owners have. That's the real difference between a budget client and a high-end client is they are looking for solutions and they are looking for someone that can provide actual solutions and answers. So this goes back to market research and you're going to hear me say this a lot during this video because it's so foundational. If you can do your market research, everything else in your business is going to become easier. Why is that? Because it's going to help you inform your packages and your services, your pricing, how you talk about everything on your website, how you talk about it in your service guide, how you talk about your business and your services on social media and in email. Um, this is really, really important to attracting those higher paying clients because when you do your market research, you're going to begin to understand the pain points, the struggles, and the goals. And that's what you need to use in your messaging all over wherever your business is, on your website, on social media, etc. needs to talk about those two things specifically. And that's what high-end clients want. Now, what I would urge you to do is think about yourself. What would you need in order to pay someone $5,000 to do something? You would need something. You don't, you don't want something for $5,000. In order to spend that amount of money, you actually need a problem to be fixed. So you have to position your services as a solution to your client's problems. And I can't tell you what your client's problems are because they're your clients and they're different than what my client's problems are. So some people might be lacking time. Some people might be lacking energy. Some people might be lacking clarity. Some people might be lacking know-how. And this is where you can really start to specialize and make a name for yourself in business. Some people might start off as just a standard website designer and realize that they really, really love people helping people find clarity around their website issues. So maybe they specialize in website audits and consultations and don't actually do any website design. They just make a lot of money helping people figure out their shit around their website. 
Or maybe your type of client is super, super busy and they don't have time to create a website. They don't have time to think through the content collection process and what all needs to go into it. And they need someone who can do the thinking for them or at least navigate that thought process. So it really just comes down to what type of person you're bringing into your business and that you want to work with and their specific needs. Okay, our second question is, what makes the design between a cheaper website and a $5,000 website different? Is there more handcrafted code or customization that I need to do? So this is a big old note. There is not more stuff you need to do. The difference between a cheaper website and a $5,000 website is the strategy that goes into the design. So instead of putting just something up because you're mimicking someone else's website or you think this looks pretty here or you have this cool idea and you want it towards the top of the page, you're going, okay, what are my client's business goals? How can I translate that to their website? And how can I design each page on their website to point towards those goals? That is the difference between a premium high-end solution-based website and a regular just informational website that looks pretty and doesn't really need anything to happen on it. When your clients are using their website so that something can happen in their business, the design needs to point towards those things. And as the website expert charging these high-end prices, you need to be able to have a consult with your client and nail down those goals and help them reach a lot of clarity around how their website can work for them and how it will help their business grow. Once you start having these kinds of conversations with your clients, it's easier to position your services as the solution and you as the expert. So with that, you don't need a certain amount of code, you don't need a certain amount of plugins, you don't need the website to have a certain amount of features or functionality because you can say, all right, in order to charge $5,000 for this website, I need to spend 500 hours, do 20 plugins, I need 200 lines of custom code, and then your client might actually not even need that. They might actually just need everything that innately comes with the platform like Squarespace, a few content blocks, the style editor, and everything laid out in a strategic way. So permission to simplify and not feel like you need to do more, more, more. What happens whenever you get really, really clear on how your services help your clients and what all goes into them is you get more sold on the value that you're already providing. This is something I have all of my students in Powerhouse Web Designer do. That's my signature course all about optimizing your web design business to gain traction. It's actually shocking how many of my students don't even realize what all they're putting into their their website services just as is out of the box there's nothing you need to add or do and we go through these foundational exercises that help them lay all of that out and that is probably one of the coolest things is being the course creator and seeing my students create all of this confidence around themselves and they didn't really have to do anything. They had to spend a few, maybe 30 minutes or so just being really reflective and outlining their services. Then they are just so sold on the value they're providing and they didn't have to change anything. All they had to do was outline it and get clear on it themselves. Don't think you need to keep doing more and being more. That is so toxic and it's not helpful. Just really, really simplify where you can and think about the solution you're providing to your client and what they actually need versus what you feel like you need to provide in order to feel better. You're probably a lot like me where you couldn't imagine spending $5,000 on a website. I'm a completely self-taught designer because I wouldn't spend money on design for my business. I just figured it out myself. I get that you're thinking somebody would have to give me the moon and all the stars in the sky in order for me to pay $5,000 or more for something. But really, if I have a problem and somebody's telling me they can solve it and do it for me, and here's how much it costs, and here's like the return on your investment and how it's going to help you, it's a pretty easy decision, right? Because it's it roots from I've got a problem and you know how to fix it. Okay, so the next question, this is kind of similar. What are the differences between a high-end and budget e-commerce store? So this is specific to e-commerce and online shops. What types of customizations or integrations do you do, or what are those types of clients seeking? 
So I'd say the difference between a high-end and budget e-commerce site is actually the same thing as a regular website. A high-end client is paying for an expert to deliver a solution. So what you need to do is get really, really familiar with e-commerce stores. So you can start by just going through your standard website platforms. There's Shopify, there's Squarespace, there's Show It, there's WordPress, um, and getting a feel for the commerce features within those different platforms. And then also notice your own behavior as you're going through um, like an online buying experience. This has been so, so helpful in my business and becoming a better designer is just thinking about or just noticing what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling as I go through someone's website and as I'm making a purchase online. And that's been so insightful and I didn't have to do anything for that. I didn't have to pay anybody to tell me uh, what to think. I didn't have to sign up for a course and pay hundreds of dollars to figure that out. It all just pretty much started from noticing my own behavior and thoughts. And you can do that for yourself as a base to get started and then also research these different platforms so that when you have an e-commerce client or a potential e-commerce client, you can go through all the different things that they might be thinking of for their website. And here's the thing, clients might not come to you knowing what they need. It's your job as the website expert to be able to draw it out of them. And if you can help them gain clarity around their vision and their goals, they're going to trust you so much more. And you're really going to position yourself as an expert. So with the e-commerce thing specifically, what I did for myself is I got really, really familiar with Squarespace's e-commerce features because Squarespace is the platform that I design most of my client sites on and it's where all of my websites are. Then I had a client who she was starting a hair product line. So we sat down and I said, tell me everything you want on your website. And then she told me some of her vision. And then I said, have you thought about this thing? Have you thought about this thing? Have you thought about this thing? And I kind of ran down some features and functionalities that a lot of e-commerce shops want. And we were able to determine that Squarespace wasn't a good fit for her because she she needed things that Squarespace either didn't have or didn't have a plugin for, or the workaround would have been really complicated and made her day-to-day -day harder. And then we looked at um, Shopify and figured out what that cost would be and all the functionality we would need. And we decided to go with Shopify. So we turned the, the discovery call and assessment about the website into a consult. And it positioned me as an expert and helped my client have a really good solution for her website. Okay, this is a really good question. This is about the client experience. How can I elevate the whole experience to make it worth my client's money? How can I up the experience so I get those good reviews? Okay, so I have a lot of thoughts on this. The first thing that I think you should do to up the experience is, well, think about it as I'm a human working with another human. Like I don't need to have all of these like rigid rules and like do this or I'm gonna like find you this or blah, blah, blah. Not that you don't need to have a, an agreement for your project and a contract and it's okay to have policies. I certainly do. If a client doesn't pay me within two days of their due date, their project goes on pause, they have to pay a, a reinstallment fee. Like it's good to have policies, but in the day to day, I, I definitely feel like it needs to be way more relaxed and humanized and fun. So that's the first thing I'll say. The next thing is you can surprise your client throughout the project process. So they might know to expect this thing and this thing and this thing as far as like the project goes, but you can also surprise them with free thoughtful things once they book with you and once the project gets going. So some examples of this. I have a friend who, she's an amazing designer. Her name's Megan. We actually did a client experience training that I'll link to below this video. And then I've got a, a free resource that will actually give you way more ideas for this too. But she gives her clients a Starbucks gift card whenever they book with her so that it, they can go to a coffee shop and do their client homework basically. And she's had clients who were so excited and surprised by this that they then turned around to one of their entrepreneur friends and said, you need to book with this girl, Megan. She's so amazing. So my friend Megan got a client from a thoughtful, probably $15 gift card before she actually even started designing with this one client. So just little thoughtful touches like that. 
Another idea is to create free um, promo, promo graphics for your website. So after their website launches, something that they can use on social media. And you can totally surprise them with this and say, hey, I created these graphics for you to help you build hype around your launch. You can actually create special resources just for your clients that help them with their business and uh, within their website. So you can actually create like a resource that's all about about building up hype for their launch and call it a launch planner. And that's something for free that they can get once they sign with you that you didn't tell them about in your service guide or on your website. It's a surprise going, hey, I know that you just wanted me to design a website for you, but I want this to be kicked off with a hit. I want it to be celebrated everywhere. So here's a free launch planner that you can be working on as I design. So, you know, maybe in that situation, they have their client homework once that's turned in, you say, awesome, here's your launch planner. I'm going to go behind the scenes and start designing. You start planning for your launch. We'll meet back up and talk about the design in X amount of weeks. These are just some ideas to kind of get you going. I also have, I think it's, it's 10 to 15 ideas. I've got a web design business bundle I created that has 10 to 15 ideas um, to help you elevate your client experience. So I'll link to that below and I'll link to my training I did with Megan. Something else that I recommend is to make sure you're available for conversations. Um, check in on the wellness and mental health of your clients. Uh, ask about their kids and their life. I know for me, I had a client and we kind of were going back and forth during the feedback process. She was getting really, really hung up on some details that actually weren't that important for that step of the process. Um, she's much like me and very guilty of overthinking things. And I could tell she was getting a little frustrated with it. So what did we do? We hopped on a call and I said, how's your heart? How are you feeling about this? How's your mental health? Let's talk about it because this seems like it's kind of tense for you and that's the last thing I want. And I made a space for us to be able to talk about the process and what was kind of getting in her way. And she thanked me for it. She said, thank you so much for checking in. And it's like, yeah, dude, I just want you to be good. So doing stuff like that and really humanizing your experience really adds to the experience and makes people want to uh, work with you some more after the project and also refer people to you because you took so, such good care of them. Something else you need to do to up the experience is you need to tie everything back to your client's goals. This makes them feel heard and understood and like they've got somebody in their corner. So you, before you even book with your client, you're going through a discovery call or a sales call something like that and you're getting really really clear on their goals and then literally everything in the project moving forward ties back to those goals and what they said they wanted for their business that is you being really really focused for your client and making sure that the end result ties back to what's going to help their business grow and what's going to help them feel like they're gaining traction in their business that's so so important Two more things around building up the client experience and using that to get referrals and ongoing work and to just have fun during your projects is to follow your clients on social media, show excitement, show enthusiasm, actually support their brand and their business. They're supporting you by paying thousands of dollars into your bank account so that you can make a living. They're probably already following you on some social media account anyway. Follow them back, or even if they're not following you, follow them anyway and respond to their stories. Be engaged with their business. Show that you're excited about what they're doing. That means so much to clients. Think of yourself as a business owner. Um, I know for me, I often feel like people in my real life don't get what I'm doing. I don't feel like I can have conversations with a lot of the people that are super close to me because they just don't get it. And I found that with my clients, we're all creative business owners. That's my clients anyway. I'm a creative. They're creatives. You might not work with creative entrepreneurs. So um, just apply this to your specific situation. But I found that my clients really, really love having someone in their corner. So that's what I try to convey to them is I'm here for you. I'm excited about what you're doing. I believe in what you're doing. And I know that your business will grow and get to where you want it to be and that you're already doing amazing things right now, too. Okay, and then the last thing that's super, super important for your client experience is, and, and then especially as a website expert and the project manager, you have to be so clear on your communication. You have to be able to set expectations and manage tasks and manage invoices and payment reminders because I know that's something clients are not 
meticulously caring about. Um, you have to be able to take control of tense situations and really step up and be the professional and the expert. And I know that that's something that a lot of designers struggle with. So I actually created a, um, it's a really awesome pack of emails and canned swipe copy that you can use. It's 35. It, I think it's at least 35. I know there's at least 35, but it's um, a client communication pack. And it talks about what to say when you get inquiries, what to say when you follow up with someone after their discovery call. Maybe you want to book with them. Maybe you don't and you need to let them down gently. Uh, maybe you have someone who is late on a payment and you don't know what to say, but you want to be really professional. Maybe you need to break up with the client and you need to be really professional. Maybe you want to book ongoing work or get referrals from your clients. So I've got all of that inside of the client communication pack. It's $67 for 35. There might be more emails and swipe copy for your clients. And it's really helped the people who have bought that feel more prepared and like they know what to say. And just it's, it's good to just have templates in your back pocket that you can pull from and customize and just take care of the situation immediately. So I'll leave a link to that too. So let's go on to question number five. Where can I look for or find high paying clients who are serious about their brand and understand the value of their investment? What industry are they in? Where do they hang out? How do I communicate and market to reach them? I don't do a lot of looking for clients. I focus on attracting them. And in order to attract someone, you have to know what they want to see. In order to know what they want to see, you have to understand the problems they're going through and the things that they're working towards. So that goes to the market research. Now, I don't want to leave you hanging. I want you to have a place where you can at least start. So here's what I recommend you do. You just need one place to start for market research. If you don't have a group of clients that you can go to and ask specific questions around your market research, like what were you looking for whenever you um, hired me for your website? What problems were you facing? What were you trying to do in your business? How are you trying to grow? Um, you can go to somewhere like Instagram and look for designers that are charging the rates that you want to charge or, or maybe they're working with the type of clients that you want to work with and go through their followers list and see what types of people are following them. And then you can start researching there. You can follow some of these people, um, start replying to their stories, start commenting on their posts and start forming relationships with people. And then inside of their DMs, you can ask them questions about their business and what they're trying to do, where they're trying to go, maybe invite them to do a quick Zoom call so that you can do some quick video questions and get to know them better that way. But the, the deeper and more intimate um, understanding you can have with your ideal client or any type of client for your business, the better off you're going to be with charging premium rates and pitching these to people and actually booking those cells. You have to be able to uh, present a solution to a problem and you have to understand what that problem is first. So question number six, how should I structure services, website copy, etc., to attract clients with budgets for their website? Okay, so this is a great question about messaging. When you do your market research, you actually wanna uncover two main things. First of all are the pain points and the fears. And then the second thing is the desire. What are the goals? What's the vision? What are they actually working towards? What's your client's deal with their website right now? Do they keep getting stuck in the content curation process? Do they not have enough time to do their website? Do they keep getting distracted by what other people are doing? So their website just looks like a bastardized version of everyone else's? Do they even have a website? You need to really talk to your clients and potential clients, people who would be an ideal client for you, and really understand what their actual problems are. Now, the second part of this revolves around why these things even matter. What's the desire? What's this going to help you do? What will having a better website help you do in your life or your business? Now, this happens for market research. Remember, this is the deep desire. And then what you can do is you can figure these things out, the problem and the desire, and then you can put that into your messaging on your website or wherever you're talking about your business and services so that when people come across it, they go, holy shit, is this person in my brain? It's not magic. It's market research. People don't just magically come up with what 
other people want to hear. They do it because they understand the pain point. And this isn't in a like cold, just analytical way. Like, let me just study you and like figure out what information I can get from you for my own benefit. This is having real conversations with people and maybe on the spot providing some solutions or some help. This is you building trust with people, even during the market research stage, and helping them uncover things and uh, gain more clarity so that they keep talking to you about their problems so that you can keep understanding and then use that whenever you're talking to other business owners who want to potentially hire you. Okay, question number seven. How do I pitch to high-end clients? How can I help them understand the value of a high-end site versus a more affordable site? I love this question. This obviously comes back to market research and messaging. Once you have those pain points and those solutions, all you have to do is get with your client. So let's say someone has inquired about your services. They're interested in working with you. You set up a call so that you can talk about it. You've got them on the phone or a video call. And what you're getting them to do during that call is talk about the problems they're having you might have to help them work through that. So they might not have words for the problems they're having. So you might have to coach them through it. But you're basically getting your client to say their own problems. And then you're providing solutions from there. And you're positioning your services as the solution. So, hey, you're having this problem in your business. You want this area in your business to experience growth. Well, on your website, we could do this and that'll help you with that. So it's as simple as that. So basically getting your clients to say their problems, regurgitate it back to them, and then position your services as the solution. It's actually very easy because you've done market research to form your services and your packages so that they can be positioned to be the solution. Do you see how the market research is really, really important? Okay, let's go on to question eight. I would like to know if a client has $5,000 or more to invest in a website, why would Squarespace be the best choice for versus WordPress. Is Squarespace really specific to small enterprises or do people just prefer it because it's ready to go in terms of technicality? How do you handle questions about using WordPress versus Squarespace from clients? I'll just reiterate what I've already said. High-end doesn't equal super fancy. Squarespace delivers an easy to use platform. It's very easy to hand off to your clients so that they can uh, take on the website maintenance from there if they want to. So that in itself is a really good case for Squarespace. Like, hey, you pay thousands of dollars to create Create this website and then the investments done all you're gonna have to do is go in and just put a little bit of your time into this website you're not gonna need to wait for my schedule and pay hundreds or thousands of dollars to update your website you're gonna be able to do it on your own so it seems more like a one-time cost versus a recurring cost which a lot of web designers who work on like WordPress they are offering maintenance packages and you have to have a lot of ongoing recurring subscriptions for maybe plugins or apps. I'm a Squarespace you don't have that. You don't have the recurring costs. You have your platform subscription to Squarespace. You have your domain that you need to pay for. And then you're paying for the initial website build out if you're looking at it from the client's point of view. And they don't need to hire you to keep their website going. So that is a huge selling point. Now, not all businesses are suited for Squarespace. Though Squarespace does do a really, really, really great job of having just built-in features for a broad set of industries. So so a lot of clients will be really great for Squarespace. But like in my example before with my client who had a hair care line, Squarespace wasn't going to meet all of her needs. So we moved her to Shopify because she was a commerce business and it made more sense for what she needed. So a client would choose Squarespace over WordPress and even spend $5,000 or more for a Squarespace website because what they need is the solution for their business. They're not, I mean, they're actually paying for the website, but what they're really paying money for is a solution for their website. And they're trusting you as the website expert to make sure that the platform you're telling them they should be on can actually meet their needs and will not screw them over in the future. For instance, with my commerce client, we could have started her on Squarespace and then moved her over to Shopify, but that would have been so much more money down the line and a lot of time wasted. We'd have to go back on what we did. So we just started on Shopify and my client really appreciated my expertise and knowledge around that. By understanding different platforms and then at, from there understanding what your client needs, this really positions you as an expert and can save your client thousands and thousands of dollars down the road. So don't discount Squarespace, just understand its features and then make sure it can 
help your client with what they need help with. So this is a really, really great question about managing projects and using tools. Do clients really want to be involved in Asana? Mine generally don't want to learn a new digital interface or for just one project because they're super busy. I want to make them feel like they're getting a lot of personal touch because people who pay big money for a website expect it. Okay, so here's my two cents on this. Your client is paying you a lot of money to provide a solution to their problem. Let's say you were going to a salon and you wanted to bleach your hair, you wanted to go blonde. You wouldn't go to the salon and say, hey, I want to take my almost black hair to blonde and then them go, okay, great. What tool should I use? How should I mix up the solution? You would probably start to lose trust in them and think, now I'm going to go to this other salon down the road who's not asking me all of these questions because this person doesn't really seem like they're confident in what they're doing and I don't want them to touch my hair with bleach if they're not confident in what they're doing. So for me, I don't even tell my clients that we're using a project management tool or, or um, like, hey, get ready, here's a sauna. They don't know about that until they actually become a client. And then I tell them, okay, we're using a sauna. This is going to keep us on track. Um, it's got like less than 10 tasks for them. Mostly Asana is set up so they can see the trajectory of how the project will work. So I've got it split up into phases and then all of the tasks within each phase is listed out. And it's really helpful for my clients in seeing how the project will pan out. And it's helped my clients understand we need to finish all of the tasks for this phase before we can jump into this phase. So it helps them stay on track. And like I mentioned, my clients have, I think, 10 or less tasks in Asana. Two of them are scheduling calls right at the beginning of the project. Two of them are payment reminders. And then I think three might be feedback tasks for them. And then one is just like, here's all of the links to all of the different like documents and stuff. Here's your client homework. Here's your Google Drive folder. Here's your contract. Here's your invoice, etc. So when you look at my projects in Asana, they're actually mostly my tasks. And then what happens is, and I hear this from a lot of designers, what happens is Somehow clients get tagged to your task as the designer. So instead of getting reminders about just their task, they're getting reminders about your task too. And when you go in and attach things and like when you're late on something or when you mark it done, they're getting reminders too. So that's when clients get overwhelmed with Asana. Now you don't need to make sure they know all the bells and whistles of Asana or whatever project management tool you're using. They just need to know that it's going to help their project be more successful and then the basics for how to use it. You don't need you don't need them to um, get really, really invested in a project management tool that they're only going to use for a few weeks or a few months. I definitely don't want you to ask your clients to do that. But I do think it's important to rely on your own expertise and and saying I need a project management tool for my sanity and so I can stay organized is a gift to your client and you have to look at it that way because if you're managing multiple clients and projects or one client and just trying to like be a human and live your life and like have balance um, and a project management tool will help you stay on track and help you feel more clear-headed and show up better in your projects then yes that's needed you would not hire a high-end coach and say no I'm not touching in in your project management tool. Um, I only like text. Your coach would probably be like, we're not gonna be a good fit because this is where I go to talk to all my clients. So you just need to be able to look at yourself as that expert and know that you're not being unreasonable. If you are catering your whole process to your client and making sure it's amazing for them, you can then trust yourself that you're not trying to make their life complicated or hard. Um, and just keep that mentality. How can I make this easy even though it might be a new tool? Um, frame it as this is going to help us get better results. So that's my two cents with that. Oh, and if you are one of those designers who has a client who's like, I get so many notifications, I'm overwhelmed. All you need to do is make sure that they are not a follower in any of your tasks. So just click a task inside of Asana and there should be little circles with like a profile picture or an avatar um, that represent you or your client. Your task should only have your image or your little avatar. If your client is showing up as a follower, you can delete them from it and then they won't get notifications about your task. 
and then make sure that they know they need to complete a task and mark it as done so that they don't get past your reminder. So it's all about that communication. And again, like I said, I don't even tell my clients about Asana until they have already paid their deposit, they've signed their contract, I'm sending them a welcome email, and that's when I go, oh yeah, here's Asana, here's an info page about it, and this it's going to be really awesome, it's going to help us stay on track, you're going to love it. And just show a lot of enthusiasm about it. And you might have clients who just like don't go with the program. Okay, then adapt your process as needed. Maybe you do a weekly email on Monday saying these are the tasks this week. And you might have to respond within your projects to specific clients because we're humans working with humans. It's not going to be perfect. But for the most part, you can say this is how it's done and it works really, really well and it helps me provide solutions. And your clients are going to be like, cool. I'll use this tool for two to six weeks, two to eight weeks, however long it takes, maybe a few months, and then they don't have to ever use it again, and they'll just have an awesome website. Okay, how can we balance personal touch and attention with the necessary use of our digital tools like Asana and Dubsado? I have to use canned emails and a CRM for my sanity and a million other good reasons. Okay, yeah, so tools are really, really important for streamlining your process and maintaining your, your sanity. That's really important. I want all designers everywhere to have this. Um, and I'm also queen of systems and queen of client experience. So I do think that there's space for both. Now, how I personally handle this is I have a few very, very high touch personalized calls with my clients. So that's the discovery call, that's the client call, and that's the presentation and feedback calls. And these are so in depth and all about my client and them, 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 their needs, their business, their goals, their their thoughts, their issues, whatever. It's so client focused so that everything that happens before, during, and after those calls, I can get away with a canned email or a template. Now here's the thing, I infuse everything with my personality. I type how I talk and I talk like a weirdo that doesn't say going to, I say gonna. I don't say let me, I say let me talk about this. Two M's. And that's how I type too. I type how I talk. So even though my clients are getting these um, canned responses, it doesn't feel that way. It feels personalized and warm. I'm just using a canned email and automation to help me deliver things that I would say if we were having a conversation. So that's how I balance that. And then, of course, if you're following your client on Instagram or Facebook or on their email list, you also have these opportunities to just respond to them and talk one on one. So I would say just balance it with super high touch personalized conversations, whether that's about the project through your client homework and calls and meetings or through more casual, chill conversations on social media. How do you gather content from your clients so that they don't stress too much, but that you have everything you need? Okay, so all I'm gonna say about this is that I have a whole masterclass, it's only 35 minutes, that goes through all of this and explains it way better than I could while trying to quickly go through everything. So I'm gonna leave a link um, to that below this video, and it's really, really awesome because the class shows you where most designers get their content collection process wrong and then what to do about it and then it even shows you my website content guide I created that helps me with the content collection process and just so you know there is a little discount to my course for quicker content framework if you watch this masterclass quicker content framework is my course that gives you my website content guide and then teaches you how to use it in your process and develop a copywriting workflow so that you can add that service to your website designs and start charging more in confidence so I'll leave a link to that below Below. Okay, how do you build websites that the client won't break easily? I use Squarespace and then at the end, I create a personalized video tutorial that shows my clients how they would need to update their, their website. So it's personalized, which I think is a great touch for a high-end service to have a personalized tutorial, whether that's you recording everything, just you behind your computer using a tool like Loom, or maybe you have your client with you and y'all are going through everything. Um, maybe it's a video call where you're going through everything that you're recording, or it's a face-to-face -face meeting. There's lots of ways that you could do it. So basically use a website that is hard for your client to fuck up and then give them personalized tutorials for how to do the updates that you know they'll need. And I do personalize these 
these because I don't want to send my client who just paid me thousands and thousands of dollars to create their website to a Squarespace help article that is actually not that relevant because I did some tweak or um, work around on, on their website. I create personalized videos that say, okay, I'm going to your blog and this is how you add a new post. These are all the things that you need to do so that it functions on your website. Here's categories. You can use that in the summary block. Here's what summary blocks are. And then within that, I'll leave links to Squarespace help articles so that they can maybe explore features deeper, but the personalized, like this is what you need to do for the basics of updating your website and maintaining it are all in this video. And then I'll also provide timestamps. So go here for this for this lesson. Go here to learn how to do this. Go here to learn how to do this. Okay, and then the last question is, what is the onboarding process like for a high-end client? It's super, super seamless. I use a tool called Dubsado, and how that works is I have a proposal that I create for my client. They're able to accept it, um, and then it automatically takes them to a contract where they can read through the terms of our project agreement, sign it, and then once they sign the contract, it takes them immediately to the invoice so that they can pay a deposit. And all of this is automated within Dubsado. That's my CRM. I've got a blog post about this that I'll link up below if you want to learn more about it. Um, and then obviously I also teach this to my students in Powerhouse Web Designer because onboarding is such an important thing with getting clients. I've talked to other designers who send their proposals out and tell their clients that they have 30 days to approve the proposal and then the designer is left being stressed out because the client takes 30 days and they're losing income and being able to schedule out um, other people who come along. So I set an expiration date within Dubsado. I teach my students how to do this and it makes everything super efficient and seamless. And my clients constantly tell me that they love that process and they want to know about how to use it in their own business. So clients actually love this seamless client onboarding process that I have using Dubsado. So I'll link to that below. And then I'm actually doing a in-depth tutorial all about my project and design process that's coming up next where I'll really dive into this more in depth. So that is actually it for the Q&A portion. I'm so, so thankful for all of these questions that came in. They were really, really good and it helped me hopefully shed some more light around getting website clients that can afford higher prices and want to work with someone charging premium prices. It's all about market research and then using the touch points and conversations you have with clients to position yourself as an expert and show them that your website services are the solution to their problems. And of course, I'd love for you to watch one of my free workshops. I've got one all about collecting website content from clients, and I've got one all about optimizing your web design business. So I'll leave links to those below. I so appreciate you. Please let me know what you think about these, and I'll talk to you soon.